As nature begins to die, we will be told that science will have to step in to save it. So, you'll have GMO trees as the answer. The silent forest, they call it, genetically engineered trees, non-reproductive, no fruit, nuts, blossoms, no insects, animals, birds, low lignin, that's the wood um, fiber, which makes the tree very easy to cut and pulp. The silent forest will grow straight and tall and will be replenished by the state in what will be considered appropriate numbers and in appropriate locations. In May 2010, from this article, we learned that the USDA approved large-scale field trials of 200,000 GMO eucalyptus trees made by ArborGen, a biotech company, to be planted from Florida to Texas. Now, we're told that the purpose of the trial planting is to evaluate whether such GM trees can become new sources of wood for paper and biofuels, also in the name of conservation and improvement. This is the story they give us. We're trying to conserve, we're trying to go green, we're trying to help. But then you come in, up against articles like this, 2008. This was from something called the MIT Technology Review, an article announcing biochemistry's development of toxicity-resistant crops, in particular, in this article, aluminum-resistant um, plants. So the article tells us that aluminum in soil stunts the growth of crops. Wheat, corn, and barley don't fare well in aluminum-laden soils. But now, scientists, plant scientists, have found a way to get the plant to shut down its own cell division, to, sorry, to stop the plant from shutting down its own cell division. Because when a plant encounters toxins in the soil, it says to itself, I don't want to keep growing. So it shuts down the cell division. But they have figured out a way to keep prompting those plants to produce um, reproduction. So this is a gene mutation, a single gene mutation, that inactivates a protein so that the plant continues to grow. The quote from this article is very interesting. The plant is effectively blind to what's happening in the cell. And that's from biochemist Paul Larson. The mutant plants can maintain high levels of growth in the presence of toxic levels of aluminum, even if they sustain DNA damage. When something begins to die in nature, it attracts bugs, blight, molds, even viruses and bacteria. This is nature's way of hastening decomposition so that the dying form can become food for other living things. Today, we have an epidemic of tree decline all over the world, not just in America, but it's in Australia, it's in Europe. Thousands of square miles of die-off in the savannas and forests of many, many continents. And in cities and suburbs, trees are rotting as they stand, swooning, breaking. They are hazards to property requiring removal. Six trees around my house have been taken out in the last two years. Sunlight is a natural disinfectant. As hazy skies limit the sunlight, molds and fungus grow. As plants that are taking up toxins struggle to live, molds, viruses, bacteria begin to take them over. This is all part of nature, and bioremediation will be the obvious answer. Metallic salts have made our air conductive. This means that we and everything around us can transmit and propagate energy. The air is no longer neutral. It no longer supports in a healthy way living things. The second group of materials found in these environmental samples 